We are God's Church of Love, meeting every Saturday. Join us. Details below. Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, and we have a word from the Lord. This is for the body of Christ. We should all be very careful. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Judge ye what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ, the bread which we break? Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. What say I then? That the idol is anything, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink, listen to this, ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. Now, what that means, before I go any further with that verse, this is verse 23. There are some things that some people can do, and it won't be a condemnation to them. But not all things. Some things are just not, are just not expedient. Some things are not wise. Some things are not just not appropriate. Then there are some times when you have the freedom to do something, your brother and sister will not. And if they are joining in with you, they are sinning against their conscience, even though it may not be that big of a deal. So we have to be very careful how we interact with one another and what we do or place in front of each other because we don't want to cause another to fail or fall away from the body, even if it's out of fear. Even if you met all the best intentions, it can still end up with disaster. All right, now, let me go further. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. You get me? Now, let no man seek his own. But every man another's wealth, I got to go into that too. Listen, you guys, whatever you do, even if it's your personal life, if someone else is anywhere of the body of Christ, anybody that can see you, you have to be careful how you come across. You have to be careful what you bring across their table. I'm talking figuratively speaking. You have to be careful uh, what you partake in in front of them. Because even if it's not a sin for you, even if it's not a pitfall for you, you can cause an offense to a brother or sister. Okay. Let me... Whatsoever is sold in the shambles that eat, ask no question for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If any of them that believe not bid you to feast and ye be disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you, eat, asking no question for conscience sake. But if any man say unto you, this is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not for his sake that showed it and for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Conscience, I say, not thine own, but of the other. For why is thy liberty judged by another man's conscience? Mm. For if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that for which I give thanks? Mm. What, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, that's the point, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Give none offense either to the Jews nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. 
Okay. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many. We're talking the spiritual profit of many that they may be saved. All right. Now, I know you wonder, where is she going with that? Okay. This is what I want to share with you guys. Okay. Let's make some examples and then I'll ease in. So buckle up because it's going to be a roller coaster ride right in through here. It's going to be tight, but it's going to be right. Have any of you ever gone with a friend of yours and that friend wanted to watch X rated movies or they wanted to uh, play the Ouija board or they wanted to participate in drinking or getting high? And you realize, whoops, I came to the wrong place. I got to get out of here. Okay, now, excuse me for talking street, but anyway. So you're saying in your mind, okay, how do I get out of here? Help me, Lord. Because you're not a partaker of that. All right. Now you're dealing with maybe an unsafe person. But let's say you go with a born-again Christian, a brother or sister in the Lord. And they take you somewhere to a, a store that sells candles and crystals and, and divinations and oils for, for casting, you know, doing a little white magic and little pretty little trinkets you can bring in your house for good luck because they happen to be superstitious. Now, you take some, they take you in there. Let's say I take you in there. I take you in that store. You don't know what store it is till you're in there. What are you going to do when you're inside of that store? The first thing you're going to do is say, uh, you, you know, you're going to look around and see what's in, like we do when we go in any store. And when you scrutinize and, and discern this is not a place that God would be pleased with, what will you do? You say, look, I'll tell you what, I'll wait for you in the car. Now, if that person insists and starts trying to shove things at you and you are easily intimidated and a people pleaser, you may go along with them to be nice, even though you know in your spirit and your conscience, you disagree totally. You know this is an abomination to God, but you don't want to offend your brother or sister, but you let them offend you. Do you understand what I mean? Okay. So that's just an example of how things can get uncomfortable between brothers or sisters and what will end up happening. If that happens to be a people pleaser, they won't talk to you about it. They will back up and alienate themselves from you because now they know that you are a bad influence to them and they don't have the courage to stand up. So the best way for them to protect themselves is to stay away. And if you guys go to the same church, this is what nine times out of 10 ends up happening. They stop going to the church they love because you're there. I may be getting it all mixed up, you or they, whatever. Whoever the one is that doesn't want to go into the store is the one that if the person the brother or sister in Christ that insists that they check it out, there's no harm in it. They will think, well, if you're that way, the whole church might be that way. And I'm not having any part of any group of believers that think that's okay. So let me find another fellowship. Now what you've done is you have separated the brethren from each other by an act you thought was okay. You thought it was no, no harm, no problem in it, no harm, no foul. Maybe because you don't know as much of the word as they do. But now they, they're newer to the church than you are. And they're so careful. They do not want to be thrown off balance spiritually. They do not want to touch any unclean thing. So they stay away from you. And the church that they love, even though you may be the newest member, they stay away from you if you're the one that's pulling them in that store. So what ends up happening is you have splinters and schisms all in the body of Christ because of freedoms we tend to take. Now, for those of you who are wondering, who's taking the freedom? I'm not naming names. Don't you trip. Because nobody 
Nobody is doing it intentionally. I believe that in my heart. But this is what I want to say to you. For those of you, this is a safety. This is a safety net. Do me a very big favor. Stop sharing videos with each other from other people that most of us don't know. Stop sharing videos. This is why I say that. It was a while I was watching a particular young sister in Christ. I will not mention her name because I refuse to judge. I'm not going to judge anybody because I know with the same judgment I judge others, God will judge me. So there are times we as true believers slip into error, slip into our flesh, just like Peter. Peter was not discounted by Jesus. Peter was rebuked. All right. When Peter told Jesus, no, God forbid. No, 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 no. You don't go to the, no, 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 no. Nobody's going to hurt you. No way. We'll protect you. No, we won't let that happen. He basically said, no, get thee behind me, Satan. Right after he told him, the Holy Spirit revealed that to you. Then Peter was right in his flesh. So what we have to be careful of is a two-sided coin here. We have to be careful about dealing somebody else's deck of cards to each other, even though the cards may have the name of Jesus on them. Because the Bible says, know them that labor among you. It's just like when you go to the grocery store and you buy an item and you have, you want to make sure that your body is not inundated with too much sugar, starches, salt, artificial this, artificial that. So what do you do? You read the labels. You have to know what you're putting in your body. Become very informed. Before you pass uh, videos on to other people, you guys, become well informed. Find out if they are controversial. And if they are, find out why. And if there is any question, don't. Just leave it alone. Enjoy it for yourself if it blesses you. Now, <clears throat> I'm saying this because there are some people who have been attacked by demons for so long. They have been oppressed for so long. They thought they were going crazy. Okay. Now, there are some things. I'm going to throw something at you from the streets. I'm going I'm to share a little bit of my dirt. Okay. I'm trying to make this really clear before I lower the hammer because I want you to understand the point I'm making. It is in love, and I really want you to get this. When I was in the streets, I tried weed, I tried alcohol, I, you know, I mean, it was like I know because I had an addictive uh, uh, tendency that I could easily be addicted to some things. But one thing that never, ever, ever did anything for me, thank God, is when I snorted cocaine. Cocaine did nothing but make my throat numb. That was it. So as a result, I didn't get addicted to it. When I started taking whites to lose weight, I took them for about two weeks in a row. I noticed the day I didn't take it, I got the shakes. And I said, I won't take any more because I refused to get addicted to some mess like that. So I stopped, never did it again. Because in my mind, I never wanted to be addicted. I avoided everything that I thought would lock me up and tie me up. The only thing right then that had me locked down was cigarettes, a 15-year, two-pack-a-day cigarette habit, which God supernaturally delivered me from later. But the bottom line is, I was not, I was not one that enjoyed the idea of being attached to something I couldn't control. So I definitely had no intentions of ever getting hung up on drugs. Never, never. Wasn't my thing. Not going to stick a needle in me. We're not doing heroin. No, none of that. No. Uh -uh. So the bottom line is what I'm trying to say to you is there are born again Christians who are extremely cautious. They are so cautious. They will not allow anything or anybody to bring anything across them or near them that can start the demonic oppression that they had to fight so long to get rid of. 
because they don't want to open the door. They don't want to dabble. They don't want to listen. They don't want to watch. They don't want to partake. They don't want to eat. They don't want to go. They don't want to be anywhere. They don't want anything to do with the unclean thing. Now I want to share something with you. This is how fickle YouTube is. I explored a few controversial people on YouTube. One person was talking about another person. Now this is another thing I know God is not pleased with us getting online talking about how jacked up somebody else is and how off they are. You got to be careful with that judgment. It's one thing not to do it yourself and to advise your personal friends, but to go on a public arena. You have no idea what they're doing that is legitimate. So we cannot be so quick to pass judgment because we don't know them that labor among us. Now, this is what I'm saying. You may be absolutely right, but don't judge and don't slander. Bible talks about that. You have to be careful about it. Now, I watched one YouTuber saying about another YouTuber's channel. This was even beyond where I first started looking. I just started looking further and I started looking at people I had never heard of before. And one person was on there talking about uh, Anita Fuentes. She was just bashing, 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 bashing. Okay. But here's the thing. If you talk to Anita Fuentes, you talk to her privately. You don't blast her name on Front Street. That's not God's way. Okay. Some people are blessed by Anita Fuentes. Do you see what I'm saying? Just like people were blessed by Peter, the disciple, just like people, just like Jesus had to rebuke him. He never wrote him off the list because every one of us will have some semblance of error and every one of us will have many semblances of truth and we will pursue truth. But in pursuing truth, trust me, not one of you at, or me is going to be perfect on the word. We will never have the last word on the word, the last word on faith, the last word on the millennium, the last word on the rapture, the last word on the Holy Ghost, the last word on hope. We will not have the last word. So stop being quick to judge. That's one thing. Number two, I don't know Anita Fuentes. So my opinions are, I'm like, Hey, mom's the word. That's up to God. All the best thing to do rather than blab about and complain is pray for her and try to communicate with her directly in love. Other than that, keep your lips shut about what this brother or sister is doing that is so wrong. Jesus never called Peter a false prophet, but he jammed him up when he said something wrong when he was off base. So what I'm trying to say to you is, yes, there are false prophets out there. There may be somebody out there saying, I'm a false prophet. You cannot go by everything you hear. One minute, you know how they did with Jesus. Think of this. This is human nature. One minute, Jesus, they said, <laughs> Hosanna in the highest, laying down the palms. Bless you, Lord. Blessed be the Lord, the King of kings, Lord of lords, blah, blah, blah. Ha, ha, ha. What's the next thing that happened? No, give us Barabbas. Crucify Jesus. Just crucify him. Kill him. Kill him. That's people. And it's the same thing with born again Christians. There's a couple on TV. I will not name their name because I don't want God judging me. There's a couple on TV, and the reason I'm saying I'm not going to name their name is because a lot of people are on their case. Now, that's what I mean when I say somebody's controversial and you got a whole lot of folks talking about this one exposed, that one exposed. Stay away from the exposed for a while. Pray about it. Find out what God says about them. Because I want to share this with you. This is the comical part. This is the fickle part. That it just tickles me about human nature. I saw something about a person that was 
considered being exposed as a false prophet. Here's the funny part. The person blaming them for being a false prophet says, this is why they're a false prophet. They don't believe in this and they don't believe in that. And I do. But what they believed in was not even scripture. That's the comical part. They were more wrong than the person they were pointing the finger at. That's why you got to be careful. It ends up being a Holy Ghost gossip realm where everybody's pointing the finger. Wrong, 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 wrong. But when you're pointing the finger at them, look at how many fingers are pointing back at you. We cannot be judgmental. We must be more prayerful. Yes, people may be operating out of their ego. That's something for God to deal with. Guess what? So do we from day to day. There are times we slip into our flesh. Some people have been nobodies all their life. And the only time they can be somebody is on YouTube. And they end up being an easy, an easy pick for Satan to use to talk through. Because he's pulling on their own needs to mislead other people. And that's the reason I say we should not be so quick to share other people's videos because we don't know them. Don't crucify them, pray for them. But what I say is don't partake. When you're not sure, when in doubt, <laughs> do without. That's what I say. When in doubt, do without. And do not pass them around to your fellow brothers and sisters who are trying so hard to be delivered. Because if you pass them on and they do happen to be a vessel of Satan, not that you said it, not that I said it, but God knows. If you pass something on and they do happen to be a vessel for Satan, what ends up happening, help me, Lord, please anoint this. What ends up happening is whatever is channeling through them, through that voice, through their tonality, through their words, through their spirit, is going to come back and start attacking the one, your brother or sister in Christ, that just got delivered, just got free, and now they got to go through all this crap all over again, trying to get delivered. And they don't know where it came from. We have to love each other enough. I know that a lot of times we share things with each other because we love. But let me share this with you real quick. Let me make this other point. Thank you, Lord. I almost forgot. Everybody on YouTube, I can't tell you how many people put down Joel Osteen. Whatever. He's not perfect. Let's put it like that. I've heard and seen some things I did not appreciate. But you know why I won't discount him? Because if I get off base, I don't want God discounting me. I want God to line me back up. And I remember the four years, the darkest period of my life, when that man preached, my husband and I would both be so edified because we needed that type of encouragement when everything was dark in our life. We were going through all that foreclosure. My husband's house was going cuckoo and the salon, I was trying to hang on to the house, hang on to the business, take care of Milton. All of it was all on me. It just And, and Milton was worried about me and worried about the finances and worried about the house and where are we going to live? It was a very dark area. And the only one, the only two people that had a message that lifted our spirits, that fortified us in the spirit was Joel Osteen and T.D. Jakes. We were fed in our need. So what I'm telling you is, yes, people can be off here. People can be off there. But God's giftings are without, his giftings and callings are without repentance. So even if he's off, he was on at one point in his life. Even if, if you think he's off now or he was off last year or whatever he did or said was off, the bottom line is not everything he did was off. He was called of God. Saul was called of God and God had to dethrone him, did he not? But he was called. So David had enough 
wisdom and enough respect for God's elect, for God's called. Touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm, even with your lips, baby. What God, what David did, he respected Saul, even though Saul was after him like a hitman, like the mafia trying to destroy David. David still respected his office. And what he did when the man came celebrating, telling him what, how Saul died and all that, and he was celebrating, David had him killed. You have to understand there are two sides to that coin. Everybody you think is off is not all the way off, and everybody you think is on is not all the way on. Judge not lest ye be judged, but be careful who you share. It's best not to share, especially if there's a lot of controversy about them. Whoever you get caught up with, check them out. I just went on YouTube to find who was calling me a false prophet. I didn't see any yet because I kept just getting my own videos. But who knows? There may be people out there calling me a false prophet. When I did the video with uh, Teresa uh, in LA, who used to be a witch, she did a uh, uh, three videos with me and you see the images of witches on those videos one has uh 30 something thousand video of uh, views another one has twelve thousand views and another one i think has i don't know however many views but the bottom line is when she got on there with me and we're talking there were people that were talking beneath in the comments section that did not know me and what they're doing is going by my facial expression and the way I do my eyes. And I know I can be a little wild and wiry at times. And what they said, look at her eyes. She looks demonic. Look at her. She looks, she's of the devil. And she, you know, I mean, it's like, I, I, I just left it there. It didn't bother me. But that shows you how people are. If they don't know you, they can draw all kind of conclusions. Just like some of you don't know them. And you think because they use the name of Jesus and they read the word and they pray, you think they're okay. Keep it to yourself and pray to God for discernment before you start sharing them with everybody else. Because you do not want to be a vehicle of the enemy to get somebody who sat and watched it just in case they really are of the devil incognito, or they really are more in their flesh and there's no anointing on it whatsoever. Because if there's no anointing, trust me, where there's an empty can, Satan is ready to fill it up. And, and that person that you shared that video with could get caught up with demonic attacks left and right. You don't know it because they're too nice to tell you. So this is all I say. Everybody be careful about sharing. It's better not to. It's really better not to. You notice I'm not sending you guys a whole bunch of videos from other people online. Not because I want you to only watch mine. No. If I want to share it, guess where they end up? On my channel, on my playlists. And I got 50 something playlists for folks to watch. They can watch a playlist on spiritual warfare and deliverance. They can watch a playlist on counseling. They can watch a playlist called YouTube Messages. Now, I don't know the people, but that particular message was spot on. I don't know them, but the message was spot on. Okay. So what I do is I just deal with what gives God glory. When people give themselves too much glory, Nah, but I put it on that. Now, if they want to watch it, they that's on them. But I'm not shoving it on their table, putting it on their plate. Okay, so we have to be careful what we share with one another. And we also have to be careful on the other side, not to be so judgmental. Because that woman cracked me up. She was slicing, she was slicing that YouTuber left and right cutting them down. They don't believe in this. They don't, they, I know they're a false prophet and blah, 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 blah. They were so full of indignation, righteous indignation. And ooh, I mean, they were zealous, baby. And they were zealously wrong because when they talked about what they believed in, it was totally unscriptural. 
<laughs> and all I could do was laugh. I said, voila, man. Que sera, sera. That's what it is with YouTube. That's people. People. It's the people factor. <laughs> don't know them. Don't be so quick to show them. What I do is when I, I, I want to share a video on my thing, I'll check out some of the other stuff they have. What do they like? What are they looking at? What are their likes? What are their favorites? What are their the ones that they've subscribed to? What are their interests? What are they about? If I see too much uh, a witchcraft, I mean, if I see any witchcraft in their interest, they don't go on my on my playlist at all. And sometimes you don't know because it's subtle. It's very subtle. Satan knows how to, he can quote scripture better than any of us, all of us put together for that fact. He can quote some scripture. He can come as an angel of light. Very caring. That's why, <laughs> that's why the beast, the antichrist, oh, that's why Jesus said even the very elect could be fooled. Trust me, he's going to come across very loving, caring, compassionate, real. Mm, charismatic. Oh, yeah. And some of us are going to have to pull each other's coattail. Let's pray. Let's ask for discernment because I don't think that that's the one we should be following. I think that's the one that the Bible talked about in Revelations. Caution. We must be cautious. In these last days, Jesus said, many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ deceiving many. You do not want to be responsible for your brother or sister being deceived. Now, there are some videos out there that are harmless. They're neither here nor there. They're not really from the Lord. They're just somebody getting a feeling of self-importance. The Lord told me this. Blah, 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 blah. This one woman, she used to crack me up. And Lord, so what should I do? Well, beloved, this is what I want you. I mean, it's like they had this, like this love affair going, this constant con con. She sounded so pitiful. I said, that poor lady just needs somebody to love her. You know, and it made her feel substantial. It made her feel important to write all that stuff. I didn't believe it. I, honestly, I didn't. I'm not naming names, but I didn't believe it. It didn't feel in my spirit, didn't register it was from the Holy Ghost at all. It just, see, there are some YouTubers that will be in their flesh one minute, in their spirit the next. But, there are other YouTubers that will be under the anointing of Satan. And there were others that will be under the anointing of lies, false representation. Just like the woman who sits there reading her Bible and call herself preaching with her nipples showing. Huh? Okay, that's really obvious. But some of them are not obvious. Some of them look pitiful. Some of them look sickly, old, and weak. And they look so sweet. But I want to tell you, you've got to pray for the gift of discerning of spirits because you too can be opening a door to Satan unknowingly. So you have to pray. You should have been praying before you hooked up with me. You have no idea who's who or what's what. We don't live near each other. We don't see each other's lives. You've got to fast and pray and ask God. When you go up under somebody's counsel, under their word, under a steady flow of God using them, you have to make sure they're truly pleasing to God. You have no way of knowing. I can put it on a big front and make you love me. I'm Miss Personality. But you have no idea unless you are here seeing me on a daily basis, seeing me react to hard times, seeing me react to people coming against me. You don't know. So you've got to consult with God. Don't just get on YouTube and assume. You know what they taught us in elementary school? What assume does to you and me. Okay. So you have to pray. Pray before you lay your plate on someone's table and sit and partake of their food. That's why I read that, because figuratively speaking, it applied to. And there are some people out there that really are. I mean, I have 
turned on and looked at the person and immediately my spirit said, false, false. And I said, okay, now I'm not on YouTube. Even when I did that video about false prophets, you notice I never showed anybody's face. I never showed anybody's face because one day that person might truly get saved and they don't need that hovering over them. When God gives a person a new beginning, their past should not be following them everywhere they go. And love, the Bible says love covers, 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 covers a multitude of sin. It doesn't show everybody's dirty underwear. That's not love. So be careful there too. Judgment. You got to scrutinize. You must discern. You must pray. You must watch. You must listen. You must be careful. You must be slow to pass things on prayerfully. If you're not feeling all that, mm, well, I like them, but I don't know if they, you don't know, don't. When in doubt, do without. Okay. Anyway. I hope you guys have heard me clearly. Those who have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And this is for everybody on YouTube. Stop bashing each other, number one. Stop judging each other, number two. Love covers a multitude of sin, number three. And stop being so quick to pass everybody around because you don't know them unless you have been with them for years and they are true blue, they have not drifted to the right or to the left. And everybody gets in their flesh for a minute or two. But I mean, when you see a consistent flow of God's word, holiness, truth, the, the, the real truth being preached, nobody trying to push a doctrine, nobody trying to push a, a dogma, and nobody, you notice you don't hear me bashing the president, the former president, president before that, I may talk about the things that are wrong in this country, but I am very careful not to bash. Very careful not to bash. I will not say who is right and who is wrong. I will say, I don't like them. I don't like what they're doing. I don't like their, their judgment call. I don't like the way they present themselves, but we still have to pray for them. You don't ever hear me talking about somebody else's channel. You never hear that. God didn't call me to be a Holy Ghost policeman. He didn't call me to run around with my secret agent magnifying glass, making sure everybody else is getting it right. I better get my own self right, take care of my own backyard. I got enough of me to deal with, to be worried about what everybody else is messed up in. So we must have that attitude. Pray for them rather than uh, bash them. Pray for them rather than judge them. You don't want to deal with them? Hands off. Stay away. That's fine. That's your right. And when you see they're diametrically or diabolically opposed to the word, yeah, you better stay away. But I'm not going to be the one to tell you who to stay away from. Because two weeks from now, God could use them mightily. He could anoint them, pour a spirit out on them, 180 degree turn, and bam, they'll be a tremendous blessing. So you go to God about who you should and who you should not listen to. Because he's the one that knows, not you. I don't know. No more than you do. There were opinions I had when I was first saved that after I got a few sniffs of myself, I backed up off of those hard opinions and I realized I'm operating out of pride, out of arrogance, huh? self-righteousness, and I'm judging. And I had to ask God to forgive me. So be careful that you don't fall into that trick bag. Because if Satan doesn't get you with one extreme, he'll get you on the other. You'd be so holy, can't, you <laughs> can't touch this baby. <laughs> and I sure ain't touching you. No, watch the attitude. So all this is in love, and we are to protect and guard each other. We are to rally around and circle the wagons around each other and be very protective about each other's well-being. So we must be careful about what we do, what we don't do, what we say, what we don't say. And we must love each other. We are a family in this God's church of love.
and you're going to have some, some, some people going on and off, just like, you know, God had to deal with Saul really rough. He dethroned his behind. He said, that's it. I'm done with you. But he was still God's call and God's anointed. And David recognized that, if nothing else. You have no idea what callings and elections are on these people's lives. I don't listen to Joel Osteen now, but it's not because I'm mad at him. It's because I'm not sure where he is right now. But that man blessed my soul when I needed it. And so did T.G. Jakes. And every once in a while, I sit down and listen to those teachings. A lot of people, like one time, like people bashed Benny Hinn. They bash him to death. But the calling and election is without repentance. So one time he was teaching on, uh, he was teaching a class. It was not a big arena. He was teaching a class. That to me is where his greatest anointing is. And when he was teaching the class, let me tell you what happened. That's why I want you to be very careful. I'm trying not to be too long. I don't even know where I am clockwise, but he was teaching a class. I love the body of Christ and I don't want to write anybody off who God can restore way higher than you may ever be. So be careful about who you write off now. Pray for him. Don't write him. Anyway, Benny Hinn was standing there doing a class. My husband was in bed snoring. I was sitting in the living room on the couch. The presence of God came so strong as that man preached about entering into the secret place of the Most High God, the communing with God in the spirit realm. And the anointing was so strong. My husband got up out of the bed and came in and sat down on the couch next to me. And within three minutes, my husband was on his knees praying because Benny Hinn, the the things he was saying was just, they, they, they reached to the core of your spirit. I could tell that particular service, not all of them that I've watched, but that particular service was anointed. And there will be times as you walk in the Lord, you will find that there will be times you're heavily anointed. And there'll be times you feel like you tried, but you were in your flesh. I do it all the time. Even the best intentions, you're never perfect. We know in part. We prophesy in part. There is nothing we do in the whole. It's all in part. So we must allow each other room for error. That's what Jesus is here for. The stuff that ain't right. The stuff that stinks. And we all have that. So that's why you don't hear me pushing Benny Hinn, Joel Osteen. I don't push people that blessed me on you. Because I don't know where they are now. I don't know them. I just know that when I needed something, I got something at that season in my life. Seasons change. People change. We have to love the body so much. This is the body of Christ, you guys. Yes, there are some people that get off, get money hungry, get greedy and all of that. And, they're, they're, and God has to correct them and deal with them. But then there are others. God knows why they're money hungry. God knows why they're, they do things the way they do that may not be appropriate, but God knows the woundings and the, the, the wreckage and the damage that's been done in their life that makes them need that. And even though God may not be that pleased with it, he still sees a heart that loves him. Look at David. Come on. We have to have compassion for these people rather than be so judgmental. And we have to have compassion for each other to make sure we don't do anything to trip each other up. 
So you want to pass it on? Hold it. Just hold it. Keep it to yourself and you enjoy it. It blessed you, enjoy it. If God wants them to hear something that's going to bless them, he'll make sure they stumble up on it themselves. Okay. I've got to stop because I get emotional because I don't like schisms in the body of Christ. We cannot afford that. We have to be united. Even with the ones who are in error, there's a difference for a person who's blatantly in sin. And there are people that falsely prophesy or prophesy or whatever. They, they got a word of tongues and a word of interpretation. Ain't none of it came from God. They in their flesh. But it doesn't mean they're not saved. You don't, you, you can't put them in hell. You can't put them in heaven. You can't keep them out of heaven. You can't keep them out of hell. Only God. Leave that up to God. It's about love and unity. Prayer. Prayer. You see somebody stumbling over their own two feet? Pray for them. Don't point the finger at them. You got four more fingers pointing back at you or three, whatever. But you, you be careful about that. Be careful about what you share with your brothers and sisters for offense sake and be careful who you point the finger at. When I think about the body of Christ, it's very precious to me. And I do not want the body ripping the body apart. Us doing that to each other is like the, 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 the reds and the crit, the blacks and the and the blacks and they're out in the streets shooting and killing each other. The Latinos and the Latinos are out there in the street fighting over stuff they don't even own and they're killing each other. For what? Let's not do that in the body of Christ. Please, let's not destroy each other and wreck each other's names. Let's pray for one another. Please. I may say or do something you don't agree with. That doesn't mean my whole salvation, my whole relationship is written off by God. Just come to me in love and talk to me about it. If I see something in you, I'll come to you in love and talk to you about it. This is a family thing. So I feel like it should be spoken within the body of Christ. But I'm telling you, the first thing you must do is love, understand, pray discern and have compassion humble yourself because when you look at a person's faults through your eyes of humility more understanding comes you're not so quick to write them off your list to write them out of the book of life it's not your book you didn't write it you didn't originate it leave that up to god and you do the compassion. Even Jesus said, pray for your enemies. How much more should you pray for the body of Christ when they are in error, when they're falling over their own two feet? I look at, 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 at a particular pastor that changed from the real doctrine to the doctrine of all inclusiveness. He is so off his two left shoes, but that man had a genuine heart. I watched him minister. And he fell into error. It doesn't mean because he fell once he can't fall back into God's ways. God can't rescue him. But you don't write them all. That was your brother in Christ. He's still serving God in his heart. That's what he thinks. And God knows the heart. And God will give him time to get it right. And he'll have to answer for the souls he has led astray. Yes. But it doesn't mean that God has totally. Oh, once you understand the love of God and him as a father. My father, for example, was not saved. My father was not. He was not a church goer, not until I got saved and I led him to the Lord when he was 81 years old. But my father would see the dumb things I did against his advice. He never kicked me out of the house. 
He never told me I wasn't his daughter anymore. We have to understand the body of Christ goes deeper than our little human understanding. There are things that attaches the body, things that attach the body and, and bond it together. That God understands because his ways are above our ways, his thoughts are our thoughts. So we have to remember that even though we don't understand, there are still some people getting saved. Remember Jesus said, he rebuked the disciples because they were running to him. This man over here is preaching you and you should go over there and shut him up. He's not one of us. Jesus said, let him be. Let him be. And I say to you, let them be. Now, they may not be on. They may be all full of error, false doctrine, false whatever. Let them be because there will be some people that won't get saved under me and might get saved under them with all that error. So don't be so quick to write them off. Just don't be so quick to listen to them. That's all. You, you stay away. You know you can't afford to listen to them. But if I am, oh God help me make this point. If I'm living in, in, in an alley, if I'm living in an alley and somebody else is living in a box, cardboard box or a tent, and I'm just rolled up in a bunch of rags and old tattered clothes and all of that, and somebody else in their tent, they have canned food, canned fruit, canned everything, and they're willing to share it with me. And maybe they got there on the streets because they committed a crime that they're really sorry for, but they're paying their dues now. And I made a stupid mistake that landed me in the street. And everything was taken from me unmercilessly. So here I am being a victim of circumstances and my own stupidity, and they are paying for a crime that they committed. And judgment is on their life, but God is doing it for the sake of salvation. Now, imagine they're kind of leaning towards the Lord now, just a little bit, and their heart is more soft, and, and they're, they're, they're more compassionate. And now they see me in my state, and they say, why don't you come and, and I got room in my tent. You can sleep in here. And I got better blankets and you can eat my tent. Now, am I going to not eat with him? Because he committed a crime back then when I committed many that I just didn't get caught by. I didn't get caught for doing them. He got caught. He might have been in a heat of passion, drunk, out of his head. Who knows? I'm not going to allow that man to feed me. Now, this is my point. You don't. I'm, if I live in the palace, I'm not going to go down there for him to feed me. It's too unclean. No. Just like you don't feed off of anybody who is unclean, who you think is unclean. You leave it alone. You stay as far away from them as the east is from the west. You have that right. You do it. That's, that's wise. But a person who is beneath them in life condition, I'm not talking in person, in, in their living condition. That person could help them. So there's some of those people that you're pointing the finger at saying, Ixnay, Ixnay, Ixnay. And God could still use them. If God can talk through a donkey, God can talk through anybody. He talked through Jethro, and Jethro wasn't even a man of God to give Moses wisdom to delegate authority so he wouldn't carry that burden on his own. Very wise advice. And here you have a person who's on the street. Now, that person on the street is going to benefit from that one. However, it's the same way on YouTube and in churches. We may be sitting up there saying, no, no, no. But if that person truly gets saved under that person and their life is completely turned around because of their relationship with God, not them, what did Jesus say? Leave them alone. Either way, for whatever reason the gospel is being preached, it is being preached. Leave them alone. 
And I say to all of us in the body of Christ, leave each other alone. Pray. Just pray. Pray for one another. Don't judge. Don't bash. Use wisdom and don't feed from everything that's out there. And don't share what they're feeding either. But pray for them. 